So, Rick wants to become a famous chef, but the cooking school only accepts applicants over 18. Rick's brother Jeff is twice older than Rick. Rick's sister Ruth is twice younger than Jeff. She turned 18 this year. So, Sherlock, can Rick apply for his dream school this year? Yep, he's 18 years old. Rick and Ruth are of the same age because they're twins. Rick has prepared all papers for the cooking school, but he still needs to get some work experience and recommendations to get accepted. He found three job ads. Bill has a small diner on the fourth floor of the local shopping mall. He needs help in the kitchen. Holly offers a part-time internship at her fancy sushi restaurant. But first, you need to pay $300 for a two-week training. Sam needs an assistant in his noodle shop. Now, only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you tell which one? Hmm, there's no fourth floor in this shopping mall. Holly's picture is hanging on the window of the restaurant, and it says scammer. So Rick should choose Sam. Sam liked Rick's skills and CV, but he wanted to test his intelligence before hiring him. That's why he gave Rick this list of ingredients and asked him to bring them from the pantry of the cafe. Unfortunately, Sam coded this list. Can you help Rick find all the products? Here's the first ingredient. I always try to catch up with my buddy Mustard. What am I? Have you guessed? It's ketchup. Here's the next one. My closest friend is peanut butter. What am I? The second ingredient is jelly. I'm a nut that is only delicious when fried or baked. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a donut. I am a bird, I am a fruit, and I am a person at the same time. What am I? A kiwi. I go along with most veggies and snacks beside me. What am I? I'm a dip. (laughs) It's nothing personal. I'm a cup that doesn't hold any water. What am I? I'm talking about a cupcake here. A little pool with two layers of water around it. One is white and soft, and the other is dark and hard amidst a light brown grassy lawn with an outline of green grass. What's that all about? It's a coconut. It's hard to get a smooth bite, and you can chew me for a long time if I'm too dry. What am I? And the correct answer is jerky. I'm a green veggie that looks like a tiny tree. What am I? Can you guess? I'm broccoli. A time when they're green, a time when they're brown. But both of these times cause me to frown. But just in between, for a very short while, they're perfect in yellow and cause me to smile. What are they? Well, I'm sure you've guessed it's all about grapes. People confuse me with a vegetable, but I'm actually a fruit. I'm red when I'm ripe, and I'm sliced and served on burgers. What am I? A tomato or tomato? 
I'm the type of room you cannot enter or leave. I raise from the ground below. I can be poisonous or a delicious treat. What am I? Can you guess? All of this is about a mushroom. You throw away my outside and you cook my inside. Then you eat me from the outside and throw away what's inside. What am I? The correct answer is corn. I'm the kind of food that mummies like to eat. What am I? It's a wrap. Oh, really? Time for the final ingredient. I wear a red coat and have a stone inside my throat. Who am I? I'm a cherry. Hey, great job. Rick has brought all the ingredients. Sam hired him right away and asked him to take orders. Rick saw three customers in the cafe, but only one of them was a real human. Can you spot who exactly it was? This woman has gills just like a fish. She's a mermaid. And this guy's wearing trousers instead of a shirt, and he's trying to pay with shells. It's pretty clear he's not from this planet. Someone had stolen a tip box from Sam's Cafe. The police arrived almost at once. Rick said that he could only see the back of the robber. He knew it was a woman. The next day, another robbery took place. But this time, the guard managed to block the exit. The police arrived in a minute. They saw four women in the cafe. Can you tell who the thief was? It was Pam. She's the only one whose shoes are good enough for running. The police nearly arrested Pam, but she managed to escape. Rick ran after her and noticed she snuck into a school. Rick followed her. He noticed Pam's hoodie by one of the doors, so he entered the classroom. Rick faced four ladies who looked like Pam. Can you help him find the real Pam? There she is. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. Two months later, Sam gave Rick a good recommendation. Rick applied for cooking school. And now, he has to take some exams. Rick's current task is to cook a delicious soup. Three pretty ladies are taking the same test with him. He liked them equally, but only one of them was trustworthy. Can you tell which one? Jenny has a bottle of poison in her spices collection. Fiona put pushpins in her soup. It's very suspicious as well. Kelly didn't do anything wrong. She looks pretty reliable. After the soup test, Rick got a new task. He must tell which cupcake is in the very center of the tray. Can you help him? It's the pink one. Here's the next task. Which macaroon is in the very center? The purple one. Great job! What about this tray? Can you tell which cookie is in the very center? Ah, this one! Rick invited Kelly for dinner. It was their first date. He wanted to impress her and made dinner himself. He left all dishes in the kitchen and went upstairs to take a shower before Kelly's arrival. When Rick returned to the kitchen, he found that someone had eaten all the food. He questioned three suspects. Ruth said, I'm on a diet. I don't eat after 5 p.m. Rick's dad said, I've spent the entire evening outdoors removing dry leaves from the roof. Rick's brother Jeff said, Bro, I've been training all day. 
the marathon is scheduled for tomorrow. Who's lying? Rick's dad. The roof is still covered with leaves. And Rick's dad is a pig. Kelly offered Rick to go for a picnic in the park. They found three cozy spots. But only one of them is safe. Can you tell which one? There's a cougar hiding in this tree. Not the safest company for the picnic. And there are snakes in the grass. So the guy should choose the second option. Rick and Kelly had a conversation about the future. Rick confessed that he wanted to open his own restaurant. Kelly wanted the same. Suddenly, a creepy witch appeared in front of them. She said, Young people, I'll give you money for your restaurant if you manage to solve my riddle. The two agreed. She asked, What hatches without food? In a minute, the witch gave them a suitcase full of fresh crispy dollars. What did they say? The correct answer is hunger. Rick and Kelly ran home, but they got lost in the park. They walked in circles for several hours and got very tired. Finally, they found the gates. But the park's guard had already locked them because it was very late. The gates had a combination lock with nine multicolored buttons. Can you help the two guess this code? Pay attention to the color of the lanterns in the park. This is a hint. To open the gates, the friends need to click on the red, yellow, and purple buttons. Now, Rick and Kelly are business partners. They need to find a space for the restaurant. So they hired an agent who offered them these three options. Can you help them make the best choice? The second space is located next to a factory that poisons the air. Probably not the best place to start a restaurant. Have you noticed this sign? A construction company will demolish the third building in two weeks. This deal is a scam. So, they should choose the first place. It's located on a crowded street and looks pretty reliable. Rick and Kelly invited friends and journalists to celebrate the opening of their restaurant. They served delicious meals and drinks. Suddenly, one of the guests, Peter, fainted. A lady from the crowd yelled, Move on! I'm a doctor! She examined Peter and concluded that he had been poisoned. Peter ate the same food as everyone else. Later, food tests found no toxins. Rick questioned three suspects. Tyler, the cook, said, I checked all the food myself, and it was fine, bro. Zach said, I've been running a restaurant across the street for decades, and we've never faced such a shame. Samantha, the waiter, said, I didn't touch the food, I just served it, sir. Can you guess what happened here? Zach paid Peter and the fake doctor to ruin Rick and Kelly's reputation. He handed them cash earlier that evening. Despite the dramatic opening, the business was doing fine. Kelly and Rick were very happy. One day, a furious lady entered the restaurant holding her little daughter in her arms. She pointed at three customers and yelled, It's her father! The first customer said, I've been in the army in another country for the last two years, lady. I just returned. The second one said, I don't know you, miss. You won't get my money. Find another fool. And the third customer said, I can't be your father. I'm a woman. Can you tell me who the real father is? It's the second guy. Take a closer look at his face. The daughter and the guy have the same eye color. What a dramatic restaurant! Fake poisonings and paternities. Hey, time to book a table. Brian had been dreaming about traveling the world. Once, he went to a job interview. Greg was a famous eccentric millionaire, and he needed help on his luxurious boat. Greg liked Brian's resume, but he needed to challenge Brian's intelligence and offered him this riddle. Turn these three toothpicks into one, and you're hired. 
You can make as many moves as you want, but you can't remove any toothpicks from the table. What should Brian do? Make a Roman numeral using all three toothpicks. Finally, the yacht left the port. Brian was very excited to begin his first round the world voyage. There were five people on the boat Captain Nick, Brian, Greg, his girlfriend Lisa, and their friend Robert. In the evening, Brian served dinner for everyone. It was fresh fish and salad. Can you tell what's wrong here? There are two moons in the sky. After dinner, Greg, Robert, and Lisa began dancing. Suddenly, Greg fell to the floor, asleep. Lisa got furious and yelled, Who poisoned my boyfriend? Brian said, Captain Nick prepared the dinner. I just served it. Robert said, I'm a vegan, so I skipped the fish. Maybe it was toxic. And Captain Nick said, Hey, I'm not a criminal. I ate that fish too, and I feel totally fine. Have you guessed what happened here? Lisa had a tiny bottle with sleeping pills in her hair. She must have slipped a pill in Greg's drink so that she could spend a romantic evening with Robert. They were flirting during the dinner. Brian realized what was going on and talked to Nick privately in the captain's cabin. The man got very angry and promised to make a stop at the nearest port to leave Lisa and Robert there. Brian went to the restroom. When he returned to the cabin, he saw that Nick was gone. Brian couldn't find him anywhere, so he questioned Lisa and Robert. Lisa said, I haven't left the deck after dinner. I was taking pictures for my Instagram. Robert said, Sorry, bro, I haven't seen him. I've spent the last 20 minutes in the restroom. Brian spotted the liar right away. What about you? Robert couldn't be in the restroom because Brian was there. Brian got very scared. He didn't know what to do. Lisa brought three bottles and offered Robert and Brian to drink some cola. But Brian knew that he had to be very careful with that lady. Can you help him choose the safest bottle? someone had already opened this bottle, Brian should choose one of those two. Brian went to Greg's bedroom to check how the man was doing. He noticed that Greg's safe was open and empty. At this moment, Greg woke up and noticed that someone had taken all his money. He started to shout, Who dared to rob me on my own boat? Brian said, Mr. Greg, I'm so sorry. Rob and Lisa put sleeping pills into your drink, and I'm afraid they've done something bad to Captain Nick. When Greg questioned his companions, Robert said, Bro, who do you think I am? This guy is a dirty liar. Lisa said, Darling, I love you. Why would I do that? Who robbed Greg? It was Captain Nick. See, he's sailing away from the yacht with a bag full of money. He took the chance to frame Lisa and Rob. The guys were left without their captain. Nobody knew how to control the yacht. In the morning, they realized that they had got lost in the ocean. They had four choices. Move to the east and meet a creepy pirate ship. Travel to the west and disembark at a desert island. Go to the south and meet with the Loch Ness Monster. Go to the north and get stuck in the Bermuda Triangle. Which option should they choose? The Loch Ness Monster is a very unpredictable opponent. The Bermuda Triangle doesn't seem to be very safe, and these pirates look pretty aggressive. So the safest choice is to move towards the desert island. They can send an SOS signal and wait for someone to save them. But a sudden storm changed their plans. It wrecked the yacht into small pieces. 
Take a look at this picture and try to guess how many people survived and reached the shore. All four. Although there are footprints of three men on the sand, someone must have carried Lisa in his arms. See? Her glasses are over there on the sand. The guys got very hungry. They separated to find some food on the island. Lisa found this palm and decided to pick some bananas. Greg walked through the jungle for some time and noticed this orange tree. Robert discovered a pile of coconuts on the ground, and Brian decided to catch some fish. Only one of these options is safe. Which one? A creepy snake is hiding among these bananas. A tiger is sleeping behind this orange tree. A scorpion is chilling on these coconuts. So fishing is the safest choice. After dinner, the guys gathered around a fire. They agreed to take turns sleeping to keep the fire going and scare wild animals away. Robert drew lots to be the first on duty, but he was very sleepy. Brian told him, It's okay, I can swap places with you if you guess my riddle. I'm as light as a feather, yet no man can hold me for long. What am I? Robert failed to crack this riddle. What about you? The answer is breath. Greg, Brian, and Lisa went to sleep, and Robert stayed by the fire. Early in the morning, Brian woke up and saw that the fire had gone out, and Robert was gone. Brian woke up Greg and Lisa, and they started looking for Robert. Can you help them find any clues on the beach? All four of them are barefoot. But now, there are boot prints in the sand, and a drone is flying in the sky along with the birds. It seems that this island is not as deserted as they thought. Brian, Lisa, and Greg walked around the island and found a villa on a rock. They wanted to come closer, but suddenly, they heard Lisa scream. Someone left a trap in the jungle and the girl fell into a well filled with trash. It was very deep, and Brian and Greg couldn't help her get out. Suddenly, it started to rain, and the pit began to fill with water very quickly. Lisa screamed, Help me, please! I can't swim! What should Lisa do to survive? She can take these two empty canisters and use them as a life buoy. And when the water level rises, she'll get out easily. The guys continued their journey to the mysterious villa. On the gate, they saw a combination lock with this clue. In the first line, one number is correct and well placed. In the second line, nothing is correct. In the third line, two numbers are correct but in the wrong places. In the fourth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. And in the fifth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys open the gate? Let's start with statement 2 and exclude numbers 9, 2, and 0. From statement 3, we can conclude that 5 and 7 are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Let's take a look at statements 4 and 5. Both lines say that one digit is correct, but in the wrong place. So, the remaining digit can be either 8 or 6, but we already know that 7 is in the code. Therefore, the digit that fits statement 5 is 7. Now we can exclude 6 and conclude that the remaining digit must be 8. Now, let's determine the order. In statement 3, we have two correct numbers in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by 8, we only have one option. To put 7 first and 5 second. Therefore, the correct code is 758. The guys entered the villa. The backyard was full of pirates, and they were having a pool party. Suddenly, Lisa began to cry. Can you guess why?
Robert is chilling with this lady pirate in the swimming pool. The girl is just jealous. When they finally came up to Robert, he said, Hey guys, check it out. These pirates let me join them. Greg, Lisa, and Brian decided to leave that place as soon as possible. But Robert wanted to stay because he got engaged with Gemma. She was a big boss there. Everyone worked for her. Brian looked around, searching for a way out. He noticed these three guys. He realized that one of them was an imposter. What about you? Can you see the imposter? It's the third guy. He has a police badge. He must be working undercover. The police officer's name was Mike. Brian asked him for help. Mike pretended that he didn't speak English, but later he gave Brian this note. It was encrypted and the ink was to disappear in 10 seconds. Can you crack the code? It says, helicopter. Greg, Lisa, and Brian jumped into the helicopter. Mike tried to start the machine with a stolen key, but the system demanded a password. Here's a hint. I am the beginning of sorrow and the end of sickness. You cannot express happiness without me, yet I am in the midst of crosses. I am always at risk, yet never in danger. You may find me in the sun, but I am never out of the darkness. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is the letter S.